Welcome to the Key Creator Drafting Interface Overview Tutorial. This 10 minute video is for the first time user. It will demonstrate the basic interface navigation and introduce some of the unique features of the interface without getting into the details. You'll see the Key Creator is easy to learn, but also powerful enough to maximize your productivity. First thing we'd like to point out is that the document window has a collapsible splitter. The left side of the splitter provides tabs for data such as the level tree for managing complex drawings. Key Creator's CKD document file is very similar to the DWG file format, but is not limited to 256 layers. The Key Creator level tree is unlimited and supports a tree structure of sublevels. Besides show hide, the level tree also includes a simple lock to block selection of levels and another column with a count of entities on each level. The order and size of these columns is customizable. Overall, the level tree is a fundamentally better way to organize your work. The right side obviously is the graphics area. Note that Key Creator provides tooltips with basic information if the cursor hovers over an entity. Click once to select. Reselecting a selected entity will remove it from the selection. The entire selection can be quickly cleared by clicking in an empty area or hitting the escape key. If there are multiple entities near the cursor, the user can simply hold the cursor steady and tap the spacebar key to quickly cycle through them. Window selection is pretty standard. Left click and drag to the right selects all entities entirely inside that box. Dragging to the left invokes cross selection and will get any entity inside or touching the box. We'll review some advanced selection methods later in this video. Zooming is standard too. The wheel on your mouse is the simple way to zoom in and out and will be centered on the cursor location. Right click and drag will allow you to zoom in on a selected area. One part of the interface design that might not be obvious are the powerful context menus. Right click with nothing selected provides a menu of the most commonly used commands which don't start from a selection. Each entity type has a unique menu with appropriate commands for that entity. We recommend getting in the habit of using these context menus to save time instead of moving your cursor back and forth from the graphics area to the ribbon menu. There are a few toolbars docked right above the document window. We'll review what each of these toolbars are for in just a moment. But obviously first we're going to talk about the ribbon menu which is relatively standard. The file menu here provides quick access to recently opened drawings and options for starting a new drawing using your customized templates. The buttons in the ribbon here have hover activated tooltips to help you learn what does what. Buttons like these which have menus are known as split buttons. The control bar split button provides access to toggling the display of various interface elements. The tree window available here opens all files and the drawing layouts in each file. It's worth pointing out that the most recently used command in a split button becomes the new default for that session, which can save you a click here and there. Another nice feature in Key Creator are the simple settings that allow you to control how your mouse handles panning, 3D rotate, and zoom wheel direction. Before you spend much time in Key Creator, go to Tools, Customize Application, and set the mouse manipulation scheme to match the defaults for the CAD software you're most familiar with. This will help you feel at home. One last thing to point out in the ribbon are the Format Painter and three style buttons for simple entity formatting. These work similar to programs like Microsoft PowerPoint, where you select entities, apply color, and they also provide new users a quick way to get started. This color split button shows just eight standard colors which we recommend for simplicity, but advanced users have access to 64 customizable colors. Let's move on to running a simple command to measure the distance between two positions in the drawing. Commands like this one that need user input will prompt you in the central toolbar we call the conversation bar. When you see a prompt there, you know you've got a command active. Besides clearing selections, escape will also end any command. This can be important because the context menus will generally be different if you have a command already active. So for most position selections, the default cursor mode 
and the snap options displayed in the toolbar to the left are all you'll need. As the cursor gets near an activated position type, a small tooltip will appear and the entity will highlight. If we toggle one of these position snap options off, you can see that type of position is no longer available as the cursor passes over matching geometry. Selecting positions is both critical and something you do a lot. So KeyCritter has a lot of power here. The small buttons across the top of the conversation bar are explicit position modes used to quickly override the standard cursor behavior and lock positioning into a specific common snap type or one of the special modes. These buttons are linked to the function keys on your keyboard for quick access. So if I press F3, positions at the end of entities are the only possible solution. This also means I don't need to get close to the end of the entity to select it. That can also save some time. Expert key creators frequently override the snap this way instead of changing the general options, zooming in, or setting selection filters. The number of selections like this in a drawing add up and even the time to move the cursor to the conversation bar over and over again becomes expensive. You're forgiven for doing this while you learn, but just wanted to point out, be careful not to form some bad habits here. We've included additional examples of how to use the special position modes in the other tutorial videos. Let's get back to that measurement. Once we've selected two positions, a dialog will appear with distance information. Dialog boxes can be moved anywhere on your screen. Each dialog will remember where you put it and pop up in that location every time you need it. Note that dialogs like this one with large data areas will let you resize them by dragging the lower right corner. The entity format dialogs in KeyCreator are comprehensive so that you don't need to hunt around the menus for or memorize special commands. Everything we can do to change this dimension, which is exhaustive, can be accessed from right here. Having extensive control over entity selection is another important capability of a professional CAD program. The filter command on the home tab supports limiting selection to only entities that match or don't match a specified set of properties, all from one thorough dialog. This can be set temporarily in the middle of a command or locked on with the maintain option for use across multiple commands. KeyCreator remembers the last set of entities selected and offers quick reselection using the previous button in the conversation bar. The escape key is a simple way to exit dialogs. As already mentioned, it's used a lot in KeyCreator. Enter is also frequently used and is linked to the right mouse button while you're in a dialog. There are a few keyboard shortcuts you may want to learn to save time starting the most used commands, which are also available from the context menu. These shortcuts are all intentionally linked to keys on the left side of the keyboard and easy to remember. For example, D will start the powerful dimension command, which can quickly create linear and circular dimensions from various entity or position selections. The X and Y keys access two very commonly used line creation commands. S is for sketch and T is for the most frequently used trimming command. In the left end of the title bar, is the quick access toolbar. The user has the ability to customize this toolbar a bit using these switches. Let's use the manage windows icon there to activate another drawing which we already have open. The last key creator interface element to highlight in this introduction is the Dyna handle. This tool is powerful enough that it allows a single command to handle almost all transforming of entities like move, copy, rotate, and scale. It appears in many commands. Let's look at some of the basics of how it works in KeyCreator's stretch command. Each of the elements of the DynaHandle object can be dragged dynamically, selected for precise input, or right-clicked to pop up a context menu. Let's say we wanted to move this selected area exactly half of the distance to the left end of the part. First, I'll use the context menu on the DynaHandle origin to reposition the DynaHandle to here. Next, we can left click over that element and hold while dragging the cursor. The whole selection will move dynamically. And in this case, we'll go twice as far as we actually want. When we click on the red X axis arrow and release, a tooltip pops up with the precise distance value the entities have moved so far. I did it this way in order to show you one last powerful trick. All of the precise 
value input fields like this one in Key Creator support math operations and units conversions and even user defined variables. In this case, we can simply type divide by two and press enter. The expression will be evaluated and another enter will complete the move. The whole point of Key Creator is saving you time. This interface has been carefully designed so that you don't need to be frequently switching between tabs in the ribbon and dragging the cursor around the screen. We hope you'll watch the other tutorial videos we've created to show you how well Key Critter can handle some of your specific mechanical drafting tasks.